All right, welcome back. In the last video, I showed everybody how to use a gradient map to split tone and image. Today, I'm gonna to show you the same thing, but done in a completely different way. Now, when we did the split tone, it was kind of a muted or subtle color effect. This time, we're gonna take an image like this and turn it into an image like this. So we're going to intensify the color versus reduce it. Now, the cool thing is I am going to have a link to this image below. You can go ahead and download it and work along with me. Just let yourself know that if you don't pick the exact same colors that I use, it will vary and look a little bit different. So instead of just starting right here in Photoshop, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this image, open it back up into Adobe Camera Raw so you can see the whole process. I think it is important that we repeat what I do in Adobe Camera Raw, because a lot of times people try and skip that step because they wanna go right into Photoshop and start doing all the cool fun things. Well, guess what? That doesn't really work all the time. So let me open this photo into Adobe Camera Raw. All right, we're in Adobe Camera Raw here. We're going to take a look here at the Adobe Color. We're gonna leave that color profile. I can take As Shot and switch that to Auto, and that warms our image up. I don't want it this warm, so we're gonna come back and leave it as, as Shot. In this case, I'm just gonna take this slider here, and we're just gonna manually warm it up a little bit because I'm looking at her face only. We're gonna remove the color from the background. I'm just looking at this area here and I just wanna warm that up a little bit. So we have a little bit more color intensification. We can come in here and open this image up a teeny bit, but I don't wanna do it too much because I don't wanna wash this area up. So if I just want to open this area and not this area as much, we can always come in here to the selection tool and click on that. We're gonna hit select subject in this case. It's gonna select our subject and then we're just gonna go ahead and brighten her up a little bit and we're good to go. In this case, I like what it did the face, but it, it darkened a little bit too much here. So we're gonna come up here to subtract and we're gonna go to brush. We'll just make this brush bigger and we're gonna take this out of this location. So we're just really in essence brightening up this face. I probably could have done it with just the adjustment. Right here, I have my density down too low. So let's go ahead and just take that out. That looks good there. We're good. We're gonna hit it down here at open and we're gonna open this image into Adobe Photoshop. I'll hit Command Zero to fill this image frame here. And then I'm gonna hit Command J, which is Control J on a PC. And that is gonna simply just duplicate the layer. Now the first step, the first thing that we wanna do here is select our subject. To select the subject, and look, there's millions of different ways. We're just gonna simply click on the lasso tool, come up here to select and mask. I'm gonna click that. We're gonna come here to where it says select subject. It's going to select our subject. We're gonna come over here to refine hair. Click refine hair. And it did a pretty good job, but it, it didn't select in between our legs, which is weird. We'll come back and we'll fix that. That's not a big deal. It's easier for me to do it in the mask than it is here. So we're gonna come down here to where it says layer mask. Now, I usually have a choice between selection, layer mask, and new layer with mask. Depending on what I wanna do is what I'll choose. In this case, I want a layer mask. So we're gonna hit okay, and boom, just like that, we've got it. Now remember, we need this area selected, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time doing the world's most accurate selection. So we'll just take the lasso and we'll make this about three pixels. If you hold the option on the Mac or the alt on the PC, it turns this into the polygonal lasso tool and allows me to draw these straight lines. We'll just come in here and select this out. Just eliminate those little fuzzies because they're trouble to select those out. And then we want to make sure that we're on the mask when we do this because we're gonna fill that with black, because remember, we don't want that area, so we're gonna go ahead, we've got black. The way I did that was I used Shift Delete, but you could easily come up here and go to Edit, Fill, Black, same thing. It's gonna fill that area. You're not gonna see anything here. I'm gonna hit Command D to deselect it. 
So now we've got our good mask, everything is selected out. I'll hit Command Zero to zoom back out and we are ready for the next step. The next step here is just going to be to intensify the color or change or shift the color in her face a little bit. It's a little yellow and I want it a little warmer. So we're gonna make a hue saturation adjustment layer. But if you command or control click your mask, it will automatically make that selection and you can come up here and then make that hue saturation. It will automatically duplicate that mask. That's one way you could do it. Or you could simply just click the hue saturation and then you're gonna hold either option on a Mac or alt on a PC. You're going to left click and drag the mask up and it will duplicate it. Both do the exact same thing. So let's come in here to red and we're gonna intensify that red until I get it to a place that I want. I could also shift that color around if I wanted. So we'll just take a look right there. Let's see if we can intensify a little bit of the yellow. That looks pretty good. Good there. Now I'm not worried about what's happening in the background because we're eventually going to eliminate that color in this next step. We're gonna come up here. We're going to click on the black and white background adjustment, which is this icon right here. We're gonna click on that. And it's gonna make it black and white. In this case, I want the background black and white and our subject in color. I'm gonna drag this mask up, holding the either Alt or Option key. Now, you'll see our subject right now is black and white and our background is color. That's not a big deal. We can just make sure our mask is selected and hit Command or Control I to invert. And now our background is black and white and our subject is color. Now, one effect that you can actually do to this image, which is actually kind of cool. And eventually I'm gonna to have to come in here and brighten her up a little bit. And the reason I didn't do that yet is because once I add the color, it's gonna change it. So I would have to go back in and do it again. So we're, we're just gonna leave her a little bit dark. We can also do a subtle version of this. So I can come on over here to this little half moon symbol and we're gonna click on that. That actually gives us a choice of solid color adjustment. And so I'm gonna slide this down and get this kind of orangish red, sort of that sepia color, maybe a little darker. We're gonna hit okay. And then we're gonna come up here to where it says normal. These are our blending modes. I'm gonna click on this and slide down here to where it says color. That means we're just gonna overlay the color. Now, right now it's doing it at 100%. I'm gonna come up here to where it says opacity. I'm gonna slide that down. And so we're just getting portion of that color. And so now you can see we've got this really nice kind of brownish colorful image. In this case, this isn't really what I am looking at, but it's still a cool effect. So we're gonna ahead and turn that off because we're not gonna use it. What we can leave it there in case we do change our minds and wanna use that instead. So our next step here is we're gonna colorize the background. And when we colorize the background, instead of using the gradient map that we had here, we're gonna actually come over here and we're gonna use this gradient tool, okay? So we're gonna use the gradient tool. Now to use the gradient tool, we need a blank layer. So we'll come here to the plus, click on that plus, gives us a blank layer. We're gonna come on over here to the gradient tool. Up here is our selected gradient. Right now it's just a black and white gradient. We also have the option to use a variety of different types of gradients. So we've got a linear gradient. Right here's our linear gradient radial gradient, angle gradient, reflected gradient, and diamond gradient. In this case, we just want the linear gradient. We're gonna come up here, click that little arrow, and this is gonna give us some options. I'm gonna scroll down because I've created my own gradient right here. We've got this nice orange to blue, and this is what we're gonna add into the background. Remember, we wanna add this gradient, but just to the background, so we need to move this mask here because we want this mask up here in this location. So you're gonna hold your option on a Mac and Alt on a PC, click and drag and that will duplicate. So right here, we're gonna make sure that this is selected. You cannot do this if you do it on the mask. It must be selected on this translucent layer here. 
Then we're going to come up, we're going to draw our gradient. In this case, I'm going to draw it an angle. And the cool thing is you can draw a gradient and not like it and draw it again and change the way it works. So we're adding less yellow, more blue, more yellow, less blue. In this case, we're going to do sort of just half and half. That looks pretty good for right now. I can always go back in and change this. This is non-destructive editing. Now, right now, it's a flat, solid color and looks weird. So we want to colorize that like we did before. So we're going to go to normal and once again, change back down to color blending mode. So we're just getting the color of this solid gradient. We'll leave that at 100%. But remember, if we wanted to lower this, I can come to my opacity and lower that if I wanted. Right now, we'll just leave that where it is. So this is looking pretty good right here so far. If you're finding the information in any of these videos helpful, if you could please give me a thumbs up, that would be wonderful. If you would like to subscribe and get future videos as they come up, because I'm going to be doing a whole series on Lightroom right here, that would be great as well. The last thing that we want to do is we add another gradient, but this time we're going to add a gradient to the subject as well. So we're going to come back over to the plus, click a plus, and we're going to add a gradient. We are going to add a radial gradient. So I'm going to click on the radial gradient right here. We're going to come in here. We're going to add a red orange. So we're going to click on red orange. We will try this red orange. This doesn't look too bad, but maybe this here would look as good. I don't know. Let's try this one. See what that one looks like first. We'll draw our little map and it is backwards. So let's fix this. I'm going to hit command Z to undo that. I'm going to click on my gradient and, and what is backwards is I want the red on this side and the yellow on this side. And look, sometimes this is just the way these are. This is kind of a pastel red. Maybe the other red might be better. Let's take a look at that one to see if we like that better. Let's try that one. So we're going to move our red over here and our yellow over here. Let's try this gradient instead. We'll hit OK. And then I want to go like this, trying to get this right about here up a little bit more. So we'll try this. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Once again, we'll come up here to the normal blending mode. Click on that, change that to color. That's looking pretty good, but it's way too strong. We're going to lower that. And we're going to now add a mask. So I'm going to come down here to add a mask icon. And we're going to add a gradient to this as well. In this case, we're going to change the gradient to a basic black and white gradient right here. That is still backwards. So we want to switch this. That looks good. We'll hit OK. And then we're going to draw a gradient into this. Whoops, we want a linear gradient. So I'll switch back to a linear gradient and that looks pretty good. Let's do a little bit longer transition. Pretty good at one more time. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now we're adding this gradient color and it's filling and warming up this area, but then it's fading it back out color here but we are adding some of this to this face here. Now, the problem that we have right now is we still need to brighten up this image a little bit. So let's come up here and now create that curves adjustment layer. I'm gonna do it on everything, but that's okay for right now. I just wanna see what's going on. So that's much brighter. That looks good there. The mask right now, we're covering everything. So I did want to brighten this up a little bit. I might want to open up the face a little bit more. So I might make a new gradient. I'm just looking at the face when I do these things. I'm going to add some contrast back. That looks pretty good. I'm going to hit command I to invert it. And basically I'm just going to come in here and now apply this to this face location. That looks pretty good. And let's go ahead and group this. So I'm going to click this top one. We're going to scroll down to the bottom one. I'm going to hit command or control G to group. And then we can turn this on and off. So this is how we started. This is where we started. This is where we ended up. And that is how to 
add gradients to color grade an image inside of Adobe Photoshop. Well, hopefully this video has been helpful. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave those questions below and don't forget to subscribe. We do have a Facebook group and there's a very specific reason I created this. If you want the information, it's in the description below. But a lot of comments I get, people are asking me questions and I cannot help them because I need to see what the issue is. Facebook allows you to either post an image or a video and it makes it really easy for me to give you the answer to whatever your problem is.